1833 was man-made. And I believe one of the reasons that the Great Depression was started, of the reasons that the Great Depression was started, is to sabotage the economic power of the Marcus Garvey movement. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. So y'all getting real Garveyism tonight. You ain't getting no games. You getting it straight from the greatest Garveyite sense. In part to sabotage Marcus Garvey's economic power base in America. I'm going to say it one more time. The Great Depression of 1929 was caused on purpose to partly sabotage Marcus Garvey's power base in the United States. Facts. Oh, yes. I am not a black supremacist. I am a pan and Africanist. I have no need to dominate another people. I have no need to oppress another people. Do you understand me? I have no need to make another people feel inferior. I am a revolutionary pan-African nationalist of the Garvey persuasion. Let's get back to the Black Star Line. Let me check the text real quick and we're going to get back to the Black Star Line. Let me check the text. Good evening, brother. Can you speak on J. Edgar Hoover? Yes. J. Edgar Hoover. The infamous cross dresser. J. Edgar Hoover, for whom America named its FBI building. Did y'all know the FBI building in D.C. is named after J. Edgar Hoover, this racist devil was an unknown investigator for the Bureau of Investigation. It wasn't called the FBI yet. It wasn't called the Federal Bureau of Investigation at the time. It was called the Bureau of Investigation. And J. Edgar Hoover's first major assignment J. Edgar Hoover's first, we got a Neanderthal in here. Mm -mm, no Neanderthals. J. Edgar Hoover's first assignment as a young investigator in the Bureau of Investigation, which is now called the Federal Bureau of Investigation, was to infiltrate the Marcus Garvey movement and bring him down. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. J. Edgar Hoover's first major assignment as a young unknown investigator in the Bureau of Investigation was to investigate the Marcus Garvey movement and bring him down. The first full-time black agent for the FBI, the first full-time black agent for the FBI was hired to infiltrate the Garvey movement. When I join the ancestors, I have a question for them. When I join the ancestors, not that I want to now, I have a lot of work to do. When I join the ancestors, I'm going to ask them a question. And I am going to ask my ancestors, can you please explain to me? I'm going to ask my ancestors, can you please explain to me? Why did you allow J. Edgar Hoover to live so long that he was able to destroy every major, serious, influential leader from Marcus Garvey to Fred Hampton. Marcus Garvey was infiltrated by J. Edgar Hoover in the 1919 1919, J. Edgar Hoover infiltrates the Garvey movement with a black agent. 1919, the FBI and J. Edgar Hoover assassinates Fred Hampton in Chicago, 
1969. From 1919, Marcus Garvey, to 1969, Fred Hampton, how many years is that? Is that 50 years exactly? 29, 39, 49, 59, 69. 50 years. From Marcus Garvey, 1919, to the assassination of Fred Hampton, 1969, J. Edgar Hoover destroyed every major black organization in America for 50 years. He took down Garvey. He took down King, Malcolm, Megger, the Panthers, Black Liberation Army. Why was he allowed to live so long that he took down every major serious leader we had from Garvey to Hampton? That is one of the questions. That is one of the questions that I would like to have answered by our ancestors. Let's get to the Black Star Line. Let's get to the Black Star Line. Why did Marcus Garvey buy ships? Let me explain it. Why did Marcus Garvey put the SS Frederick Douglass on the water? Why did Marcus Garvey put the SS Phyllis Wheatley on the water? Why did Marcus Garvey put the SS Antonio Maceo on the water? Because Marcus Garvey understood something that we don't understand in 2021. Mark, I'm a right hand. Marcus Garvey didn't understand something. Excuse me. We didn't understand something that Marcus Garvey understood. Okay. Marcus Garvey understood that 90%, 90%, 90% of everything you eat, Wear, drive, or use. 90% of everything you eat, wear, drive, or use comes to you on a ship because it's too heavy to fly. Most logistics in the world are by sea. Most distribution is by sea. So Marcus Garvey said, if we are going to build an independent black distribution network, Marcus Garvey said, if we're going to build an independent black distribution where we have black producers, black distributors and black consumers, black producers, black distributors and black consumers, we got to get into the shipping. 90% of all distribution is shipping. 90% of all food comes on a ship. 90% of all cars come on a ship. 90% of all clothes come on a ship. 90% of the laptops and the microwaves and the refrigerators and the furniture comes on a ship. So if we want to make African people economically independent, we have to get into shipping. Here's the problem with that. Here's the problem with that. And I don't know if the Honorable Marcus Garvey was conscious of this at the time, but I think he was. I don't know if the Garvey movement was conscious of this 100 years ago, but I think they were. When Marcus Garvey decided to get into distribution for black people, do you realize by getting into distribution, independent distribution, he was cutting out the white man from making money off of shipping things to black people? Do you realize that the Black Star Line posed the greatest threat 
to white capitalism in American history. The Black Star Line posed the greatest threat to the monopoly of white capitalism over the black dollar in the modern world. Garvey was going to cut out the white man from getting rich off the black man. They said he got to go. They called up J. Edgar Hoover. They said, who the hell is this Jamaican putting ships on the water talking about he going to take black products straight to black people? Who is this black man who just showed up in our country four years ago? He only been here four years and this Negro got ships on the water and he's threatening to cut us out of the black dollar. They said Garvey got to go. They said Garvey got to go and he got to go now. This Negro is going to sabotage the white man's control of the black dollar. Could you imagine? Could you imagine where black people would be at if they left Marcus Garvey alone? Could you imagine where black people would be if W.E.B. Du Bois wasn't so jealous and allowed himself to be used by the U.S. government if A. Philip Randolph wasn't so jealous and didn't allow the government to use him? Do you know where we would be if all those Negroes who wrote a letter to the Attorney General, listen to me. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. The Garvey must go campaign. We got to talk about that because I'm living in an E5 Tunde must go campaign right now. We're going to get to the Garvey must go campaign in a minute. We're going to get to the Garvey must go campaign in a minute because we dealing with a Dr. Umar must go campaign right now. The Marcus Garvey must go campaign. We dealing with an Ifa Tunde must go campaign right now. Do you realize that a group of the leading black leaders in America? Do you realize that a group of the leading black leaders in America? Do you realize that a group of the leading Black leaders in America were so jealous of the Honorable Marcus Garvey. So jealous of the Honorable Marcus Garvey. So jealous of the Honorable Marcus Garvey that they wrote a letter to the Attorney General of the United States. They wrote a letter to the Attorney General of the United States begging the U.S. government to get rid of of Marcus Garvey. It is the most embarrassing, degenerative, disrespectful, dysfunctional, trifling thing black leaders have ever done in America. I'm going to say it again. They got together, brothers and sisters, your black leaders a hundred years ago, your black leaders a hundred years ago got together and wrote a letter to the attorney general begging the attorney general of the United States to deport Marcus Garvey, brothers and sisters. Did y'all hear what I said? Did y'all hear what I said? Dr. Umar is going through the same thing now. Dr. Umar is going through the same thing now. The difference between Marcus Garvey's haters and mine. The difference between Marcus Garvey's haters and mine. The difference between Marcus Garvey's haters and mine is at least Marcus Garvey's haters were actually doing something for the black community. 
The difference between Marcus Garvey haters and Dr. Umar haters is Marcus Garvey's haters, although they were jealous and they lacked vision and they were dependent on white people, they still were doing some things in the community for black people. None of my haters are doing anything for the black community except sitting on YouTube making jealous videos about the most influential school psychologist in black history. The top orator of the 21st century. The top Pan-Africanist of the 21st century. I'm going through the same thing Marcus Garvey went through a hundred years ago. Brothers and sisters, they have written to the, the state attorneys, attorney generals, mayors, governors, IRS, GoFundMe, these jealous people. And the sad thing about my situation is you got a whole bunch of beta males following a white woman who is the leader of the Umar Must Go campaign. See, W.E.B. Du Bois was the leader of the Garvey Must Go. W.E.B. Du Bois was the leader of the Garvey Must Go campaign. But the Umar Must Go campaign is led by a white woman who is leading a whole group of black men. It is so sad. A white woman is literally leading a group of black men and trying to destroy me because I want to open up a school. Try to destroy Garvey. Because he wanted to put ships on the water so black people could distribute their products. Brothers and sisters. On October the 11th of 1919. J. Edgar Hoover wrote a memo. Basically telling the FBI that it was time to get Garvey. This Negro got ships on the water. And by the way, for those of y'all who don't know, Marcus Garvey's ships did operate. The Black Star Line was functional. The Black Star Line took black farmers' crops from America to the Caribbean, from the Caribbean to America. Listen to me. When black farmers and black producers wanted to sell their stuff, the white ships, the white ships would overcharge the black farmers and the black producers. Marcus Garvey stepped in with the Black Star Line. And because Marcus Garvey stepped in with the Black Star Line, he was able to transport produce and product for black manufacturers from North America to South America to the Caribbean. That's why Garvey had to go. Garvey was taking black product from black people and taking it to other black people so we could buy black, shop black, and live black. That's what Garvey was doing for us. That's what Garvey was doing. Joe Kwani, Dr. Queen. I thought you were a hater last night, my sister. I thought you were a hater, but I gave you the benefit of the doubt. I said my sister is getting kind of spicy in the mouth, but I'm going to let her ride because she's a black woman and I love our sisters. But you're back on here tonight, sister, and it looks like you're cooning. It looks like you're cooning. Are you comparing yourself to Marcus Garvey? Yes, I am, but not because I'm on the same level as the Honorable Marcus Garvey, but I'm going through the same thing that he went through and I'm trying to finish the work that he started. I am not capable of tying Marcus Garvey's shoes. Do you understand me? I can't even tie his shoes. I am nowhere near, but yes, I'm comparing on a lower scale because what I'm doing is what he was doing. So the next smart comment out of your mouth, Dr. Queen, you're going to be added to the Book of Negroes. The Book of Negroes is a list of coons and disrespectful Negroes, okay, who would.